Hello, in this lecture, we're going to talk about a job cost system. At the end of this, we will be able to list accounts related to inventory in a job cost system, explain what a job report is and why it is needed, journalize transactions related to inventory in the job cost system. All right, so first we're going to take a look at a list of accounts and break out the items that we will be working with. Then we'll go through an example to demonstrate this. We have the trial balance. Trial balance is going to have the debits that are non-bracketed, credits have brackets therefore the debits minus the credits will equal zero that's showing us that we are in balance no income at this time the green accounts are assets the orange accounts are liabilities equity in the light blue income in the dark blue net income is of course these accounts down here we will be focusing in on the inventory type accounts when we are talking about the job cost system those accounts including raw materials that will be going into inventory work in process the work that's in process that will uh, be inventory once it's done being in process at that point it will then go into finished goods because it's finished and then we have this overhead this is this bucket i'm going to put it up here in the uh, assets section because it will be an asset at the end of the day we're going to put the support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it miscellaneous information that can't be applied specifically to a job here and then apply it to the job based on uh, some type of ratio or estimate now we then have the general ledger account obviously every account has a gl account listed by date we won't list every account here we will focus in on the accounts that will be related to inventory raw materials going into work and process generally factory overhead the stuff that will then go into work and process as well once we allocate it out and the finished goods uh, will then be here those are the asset accounts related to inventory that we're going to focus in on Remember, work and process, what it's going to end up consisting of is the inventory, which is going to be raw, uh, direct materials, direct labor, factory overhead. So when you, when you think of inventory, you always want to think that if you're a manufacturing company, we're going to actually do that in the process. It's going to have direct, lab direct materials and factory overhead. If, if we just bought the inventory, you can think of it the same thing is still there. What made the inventory was well, labor, uh, overhead, and direct materials. That's what's in the inventory. And then we've got the job cost record. So this is going to list it out by jobs. Remember when we talk about jobs, it's all the jobs are different. So I often think about construction because construction could have very different jobs. And I've worked in construction, but any job that is different in nature, we want to break out by job so that we can allocate the items to the job. So we have direct material, labor and overhead that we're going to allocate to the jobs. And you might be thinking this looks kind of like an invoice and it is kind of like this, the items that we would put into an invoice if we were to build a client bill a client for say a job of course we would then have to mark it up for our what we were going to get for it for our time uh on, on top of these items with are just the costs these are just the costs to us not counting up any markup for our revenue so if you think about this as, as an invoice this is the material that could go into an invoice and then we'd have to mark it up so if we look at our jobs, we got job 14 and then 15 down here for some reason and then 16. And if we add those three jobs up, we got the 41,000, the zero and the 42 adds up to this 83. That of course ties out to the 83 on the trial balance. That of course also ties out to the 83 in the work in process. So that will always be the case. We need this to back up the work in process in a similar fashion as we need like an accounts receivable subsidiary ledger to back up the accounts receivable account. Why? Because the general ledger doesn't tell us the whole story. It only breaks it out by date. We need to break it out in the case of the receivable by customer who owes us money. And we need to break it out in the case of work in process by job, which jobs are making up that amount. Because when we transfer or sell those jobs, we need to know the cost related to that particular job that was sold. All right. So we're going to go through some transactions and work through these. We got purchase raw materials of 400,000 on account. So if we purchase raw materials on account, then raw materials is going to go up. So here's the raw materials accounts, a debit. We're going to make go up with a debit and the 
accounts payable went up here with a credit. It has a credit balance that went up. Now we're going to focus in on the raw materials, of course, because that's going to be our asset account. So now we have the 150 goes up by 400 to the 550. That's what our raw materials is at at this point. Of course, accounts payable went up as well. We're not going to look at the GL account because that's nothing new to us. That's a normal process within our accounting. And if we look at our job cost report, nothing new happened here because this raw materials here is not yet into any particular job. So you can think of it as just a pile in the corner hasn't yet been applied to the job. Therefore, it's not in work in process. Therefore, it's not going to be applied to the job until we request it to be applied to the job. So now we're going to say, okay, now the first thing that happens is we are going to take that raw material and requisition it to the particular jobs. So job 14, 15, and 16 requested raw materials in this fashion. So if we add those up, then it adds up to 350. So work in process here is going up by 350 and it's coming out of the raw materials. So if we look at the general ledger, we're going to say, okay, raw materials is going up by 350. I mean, I'm sorry, raw materials is going down by the 350. 550,000 in it minus the 350 to 200,000. And it's going into work and process representing our jobs. So it went up from 83 by the 350,000 to 433. But this 350,000 represents all three allocations to all three jobs. It's not broken out for us in the general, uh, the general ledger or, of course, in the trial balance. That ties out to the trial balance, but I don't know which job, you know, if I sold those jobs, what is it related to? Therefore, we need to allocate it to the jobs. Here's the materials. Here's job 14 with 100. It's at 114 in terms of materials, labor, and then overhead adds up to total job of 141. Job 16, we're jumping down to 16. 80,000, here's the 80,000, and that's a total job at this point of the 80,000. And then job uh, 15, 170,000, bringing materials up to 188, plus the labor and the overhead, 212. If we add up these three jobs, 141, 80, and 212, we get the 433. That ties out to the 433 on the general ledger. That ties out to the 433 on the trial balance, of course. All right, next transaction, direct labor. All right, so remember, we have direct labor broken out by job now. We're able to apply the direct labor specifically to each job. We know the jobs that happened. So the journal entry related to labor is going to be debit to work in process and a credit to cash, we're going to say. Now, when we think about labor, it's a little bit confusing because when we think about labor, we, we think about processing payroll or processing payroll. Well, for one, we're taking out the payroll liability and whatnot because we're simplifying this transaction. I don't want to, we don't want to complicate things by thinking about payroll, but this is basically a payroll transaction. We're crediting cash because uh, people earned money and we're debiting, you would normally think, wages expense because that's what we've probably done in the past, some kind of expense related to wages. That's because we used it in order to generate revenue in that time period. In this case, it's not an expense. It's going to be part of the asset because we used their work to make the asset. So a lot of things that were expenses before are now part of the asset and we've got to change our way of thinking for that reason it does uh, it's part of the accrual process but m many people just start to memorize what type of transactions are expenses and wages usually just falls into that category and they don't we don't train ourselves to think well that's because of the matching principle and that you we use the wages to help us generate revenue and now it's not part of the matching principle because now we're using those in order to generate the assets so we're gonna have to rethink a few things here so we put in now this direct labor into the work and process at the 218. Remember that again, we combined all these to one number, 218, and that is now the ending balance in the work and process is the 651, 651, but we need to know how it is by job again. So we, that 651 is not enough. We want to know how it is by job. So if we actually sold the job, we would know. So if we allocate this out, 30,000 to uh, job 14 brings it to 48 plus the materials, plus the overhead, brings it to uh, 170 fun. One, the 112, uh, 120 here brings it to 120, so the 80 plus the 120, total job 200,000, the 68,000 to job 15, so the 188 plus the 84 and the 8 gives us the uh, 280, so if we add up the three jobs, the 171, the 200, the 280, we come up to the 651, which of course ties out to the working process on the trial battle, which ties out to the work in process on the general ledger. Next transaction, applied factory overhead based on a predetermined overhead rate. Now we'll talk about a predetermined overhead rate at a different time. Many, this problem, we're just gonna give the predetermined overhead rate 
Why? What is the predetermined overhead rate? Well, remember that factory overhead is going to have all the stuff that we're going to put into factory overhead that we could not apply directly to a job. Things like the supervisor salary, things like depreciation on the factory, things like small materials like grout or something that it would just be too costly for us to track how much of it went to a particular job, but we do want to put it into the job somehow. So you might think, well, we could just allocate that evenly to each job. How many jobs? Let's just, just, just estimate it out and allocate it evenly. But the jobs are different in nature, remember. So the jobs are different sizes. So we have to figure out, okay, how can we allocate this stuff to the jobs using some kind of uh, relevant uh, allocation method? And so what we do is we usually find a cost driver and oftentimes that's going to be direct labor. So why? Because direct labor jobs that have more direct labor, they would then have more cost allocated to them. They would be larger. So you would think we would allocate more overhead. So we determined based on last year's numbers, based on the ratio of direct labor compared to the overhead, how much we should allocate to each job of overhead based on how much direct labor was in each job we came out to one to 50 percent now if we do the journal entry then we're going to we're going to say the job's going to get work in process 109 into work in process we're going to credit factory overhead so again that 109 represents a bunch of different stuff that we're just kind of allocating in based on last year's numbers of all this kind of stuff that we just allocated out that we're going to put into factory overhead